Hello, everybody, and welcome to a Monday evening here on Cobalt Press for our third session of The Great Ooscape. I'm Little Red Dot. Uh, I will be your GM for today, as well as your resident Cobalt Press Twitch uh, producer. Uh, I'm excited to welcome back our whole cast uh, for what was full-on lever-button shenanigans uh, last week. It was just like... Um, yeah, it was full shenanigans. So I look forward to what you remember uh, and what is next on our plate as uh, we left a little bit on a cliffhanger. Uh, but before we jump into our recap, let's actually meet these fine folks. And I want to remind everybody today, uh, we are... Uh pushing all of you to raise funds for Jasper's Game Day. If you don't know anything about Jasper's Game Day, oh boy, guess what? I got tons of people here that can tell you about it, and there's a link in chat that'll lead you over there. But Jasper's Game Day does, in fact, they're a nonprofit that helps raise funds um, for suicide prevention and awareness, which is a really, really uh, important nonprofit, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, they love games, and we love games, and it all seems like the perfect pairing. So uh, last week was, now correct me if I'm wrong, Josh, last week was y'all's big... Um, week right yes. your Jasper game day week so uh, how did it the go? u.s game week uh was this past week and uh the australian game week is actually uh still going on right now okay so uh we've got a lot of things happening all at once um uh, but it, it was a great week we had a lot of fun uh, a lot of money was raised and uh of course you know we played a lot of D. &D. like you do well that's what we hope to do here tonight and to follow up on all these amazing efforts we thought uh that we tonight would just continue the fundraising uh, shenanigans. So check that link there. That'll take you right over to their website where you can make a donation. Next week, we're going to have a very special link. I think I've decided, based on backstage talk, that next week for our Jasper's Game Day, we're going to have a goal. And if the goal is met, the Mad Mage will return. Oh! Mm. But only if okay. chat uh, chat can, can help us make that goal. So uh, we'll have some fun things to do along the way. Uh, so yeah, check the link. Check it out now. Speaking of, Josh, you spoke up first. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm going to put you on the spot. You're up first. Tell us who you are, hey, who you're playing. <laughs> I'm on the spot. My name is Josh. Uh, you can find me on the internet at Joshua M. Simons. That's my name. Uh, I am the community and content manager for Demiplane. I am the assistant director of ambassadors uh, for Jasper's Game Day, where I get to work with Katie. You'll learn more about her in a moment. We have a great time. Uh, I do a whole bunch of things in a whole bunch of places. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, today, I am playing our lovely uh, Shiver, um, also known as a sapphire jelly, uh, gelatinous ooze from the far north. Up there in the UP, and uh, he's just a real friendly guy and is just excited to be hanging out. Bless him. Bless him. All right. Well, you know what, Katie? You got called on. We're going to popcorn this week because I'm a chaos monster. So you're up Ooh. next. Okay. Hi, everybody. I am Katie Downey, a.k.a. Goblin Katie. I am a variety streamer and TT. TTRPG pod, uh, streamer and podcaster. <laughs> you can catch me on Sundays on the D4 stream. But um, I am also the executive manager for Jasper's Game Day and a Take This ambassador. So I am super excited to, to be here and very grateful to uh, Cobalt Press for helping us continue the Jasper's mission. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Y'all are doing all the hard work. We're out here just making sure you can keep doing all, all the good in the world. <laughs> well, we couldn't do it without you. <laughs> awesome. Um, moving right along. I don't know. Pick somebody, Katie. Oh, I forgot to say, I'm playing Bruhilda. Oh, right. The, um, the, <laughs> the Doppel Elixir. Um, and I'm going to pick Drac. Nice. Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm the one that's Drac. Um, hi, I'm Drac or Draconics. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Draconics. That's D R A K O N I Q U E S. Um, I use he, they pronouns, and uh, I'm going to be playing Classies, they, them. They are, um, their full name is Melf Decimal Classification System, or Classy for short, but. Um, even that on a season name is full name. Uh, <laughs> the rest of it is uh, just a bit longer. But just the best way to classify and organize your any any wizard's um, way to classify organized books. Um, at least any wizard worth is their grain in salt. But clearly, this mad mage isn't isn't worth much because they they just organize everything willy nilly. Um, but yeah, I am a, a teacher, be um, writer, producer, performer, all that all of that stuff. And you can find out where what I'm up to where at any given moment. And when um, on my Twitter, uh, so I'm I'm I have my things in way too many pies right now, 
Um, and I'm going to throw it over to, hmm, this is a very hard choice because mm. there's clearly not one person. There's, I can't think of anyone else. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Wow. Bless. Bless. Wow. Dragon. Just starting one. off with I, I just appreciate you, Drac, and everything you do. I never wow. forget that. What's up, y'all? It's me, well, your favorite non-binary slime, best friend on the internet. And today I am playing Lord Demons, Lord Barbariel Demons Bane, whose claws scratch the earth and, and the wings scrape the head against the heavens. Uh, they call him Barbie for short. Uh, they are just a cute little Icar ooze who is the remains of a demon lord who was defeated by the Mad Mage, and they have a chip on their shoulder about it. And they're going to get their their true revenge on the Mad Mage. What it's going to be? I don't know. They're just a tiny, cute little uh, ooze with a skull with a skull that they're using as a home. So hey, who knows how this is going to go? Uh, me, I am a TTRBG performer, and you can follow me on Twitter at WALE132, just like the cute little Disney robot. Oh, oh. He's basically a hermit crab with a skull. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's an, he's an oozy crab. I don't know yeah, how I didn't make that connection. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, um, I feel like a recap is in order because there there were some things that went down last week and um you you made some new allies and we left off with a very big question. Well, really all of you left off uh fulfilling a hopefully a question, a wish, in fact. Uh but last week you stumbled through uh a few more floors, including a dining hall, uh that included, you know, for whatever reason, a single Trick trapped turkey, um, which you set the trap off, but were not affected by it. And you collected a large uh, consumption of eyeballs uh, from mm, two uh, uh, bowls full of them in this dining room. And uh, I believe it was your owl bear friend who assured that none of the tables or chairs are any longer in place in that dining hall. Um, the next floor proved to be a smidge trickier. It wasn't about dining. It was about getting from place to place uh, uh, through a series of buttons, switches, and platforms. And after about an hour, an hour and 20 minutes, which was the rest of the session, uh, these oozes, this group of oozes, managed to figure out how to navigate using these series of switches. Um, it worked out great. It worked out awesome. Um, and through moving from room to room and using the mechanism, they bumped into the adventurers who jimmied their way into the front door the day that the wizard or the mad mage left. Um, they were very, very quickly um, dealt with. Um, I guess we'll say there was a little, little fighting that actually occurred. These poor first level adventurers died at the hand of four oozes that dropped from the ceiling, uh, if I remember correctly. So, uh, and then when it was all said and done, uh, you figured out how to move down a floor, and you found another mechanism. Oh, wait, I forgot. You rose something from the dead. Let us not forget you all played Frankenstein, bringing to life your own very special... special I think it was the blood zombie, is what I based yeah, it off of. Yeah. It was the blood zombie, wasn't it? Or the blood yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. It was the blood zombie. It was the blood zombie. Uh, but, but this blood zombie, um, things got a little out of hand when the oozes tried to start playing God, and... Um, she, this Uz Uzami came out a little, um, well, kind of excited and thirsty uh, for the next phase of their undead life, I guess you could say. Um, and I want to think you all left her there. We to wait, to wait up there. to the dining room. Yeah, we told her that's to go right. to, yeah, that's right. to wait you sent her for the, the dining reunion. Room. That's right, because the union's going to be meeting in the destroyed dining room. That's, you decided yes. to get It's the union hall. hall. It's the yeah. union hall. The union yeah. hall. And last but certainly not least, uh, again, machinations of strange and various kinds, more buttons, and you all decided this time, instead of one at a time, might as well just press them all. And press them all you did, and it started uh, a machine that turned on a very large crystal ball, revealing to you a creature trapped inside of it. Uh, and he had very little to say to you, other than he was trapped here, he appreciated you freeing him, and he wanted to know. What is your wish? If I remember correctly, he's still trapped. Oh, hey, now, you said you wanted to be released, so my wish is for you to be released, and then maybe you could join our union. 
this this cre- this this creature is um, ghostly and made of like smoke and mirrors. Basically, uh, you can barely take their form. You don't know if they were once human or you have no idea. It seems like the essence of what was um, maybe corrupted in some way. Um, and it simply says to you, "You want to free me?" Oh yeah. Truthfully. Sure. Why not? I mean, we're free, right? Now, the rest of you had wishes last week as well. Yeah. Yeah. The creature or this this volume of smoke turns and looks at the rest of you as if to assure that this is also what you uh, desire. I Uh, desire my own pair of legs as I have wished previously. But if granting you your freedom is what you wish for, then I assume you will be a valuable ally in our future endeavors. Yeah, extra hands to organize the books would always be nice. So like how many wishes do we actually get? Because if it's like one per person, then like, you know, I could wish for something different and then we could also still wish for you to be free by using all of our wishes to collectively get something for everybody. Silence, ooze. I only grant one wish, but if it is to free me, I shall break my rules for you and only you, slimy lot. Oh, that's I, real nice of you. That is that's very nice. generous. That is very nice so, of you. One each. You get one, one each. Okay. Oh. I mean, I would love um, to have all of the books here organized in the the proper way it's meant to be organized, obviously using the Melk Decimal Classification System. The only way for any spellcaster to really organize their scrolls and books in a coherent and usable way. Do you want me to use my magical abilities to reorganize this library? Yeah. Done. <laughs> Next. Now, now you have to use his cla- or their classification system, though. Of course, as, as you wish. Yeah, and could you just tell my friend Reggie that I said hi? Maybe send him a candy gram or something. Candy gram is on the way. <laughs> cool. And I appreciate that. You know, I haven't seen him in probably, oh, 10, 15 years now. It's been a minute. Extra large candy gram is on the way. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, then we, I suppose, we just have to work out the... Uh, the legs for Barbie. Yes, whisk granting being inside of a glass bobble. Yes, squishes, squishes all up. I have one wish and one wish only, and it is one that requires me to have the power returned to me so I can defeat this mad mage who has cursed me into this minutive form of gloop and ichor. But to achieve that, I will need power and strength from you. If you cannot provide that, I would like legs. Tell me of these magical limbs you require. Oh, well, you see, my le- I require legs back when I was Lord Barbriel Demon's Bane, he who claws shredded the earth and swings, scraped the heavens. My legs were mighty. Oh, and hey, hey, hey. Full of power. I know you. I've heard of you. Wait, wait what? I, I've heard of you. Wait, really, 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 you have? Oh, yes, of course you have heard of Lord Barbriel Demon's Bane, whose claws scrape the earth and back scrapes the heaven. Uh, who are you exactly? Uh, maybe I can put a name to a face, probably. My name is... Oh, I it, it is... Oh, uh, it has, your na- has your true name been sealed so you cannot unleash, unleash your full powers? Yes. Uh, I hate when that happened to me oh. once, and it was a, it was the worst. I it just made getting things done like just really impossible for a good long time. So tell me, Demon Lord, what would your legs provide you? Speed, strength, it charisma. Would me this. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna lie. I really want to see charisma legs. <laughs> 
me to I would <laughs> say by full power. Each one of my legs provided me a different ability. I would like the ability of charisma back into my repertoire, for obviously I am already mighty and fast, but I need my beauty to return to me. All, all of your wishes shall be done. And I shall free myself. <laughs> and there's this like, and this like snap. It's like a pop sound. There's a somewhere off in another place. There's a very large, um, you know, VIP candy gram delivered. The, it, there's noise that begins to rumble amongst the tower, both above and below you. Um, and, uh, oh, green room chatter, um, comes above or below you, and you can hear the sound of, like, furniture moving. And then all of a sudden, um, you see from the flight of stairs below you and the flight of stairs above you, books begin kind of floating past you, almost like birds. They're, like, flapping around, and they begin moving um, and trying to replace themselves and reorganize. The place is organizing itself on its own, but it is mass chaos. Sheets are fluttering, if you could see upstairs. Uh, books are <laughs> re-slotting with no care for anything in its way. Oh, dear. And Barbie. As books zoom over your skull top house, uh, you feel something uh, deep in your uh, oozy loins. Uh, it begins to uh, grow from uh, the bottom of, of your ooze. Uh, uh, legs, slowly but surely, and as they begin to grow from your oozy body, they don't look like the last legs that you had. You did, in fact, ask for charisma-based legs. So I'm going to go with what my gut instinct was last week, which is to gift you a dual set of the, uh, you know, fish-netted lamp legs from A Christmas Story. Um, these beautiful, like, they look like Patrick legs, you know, from the SpongeBob oh, yes! movie. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what they look like. Like, little heels that come to a point, um, and they have... Yeah, they're dancing legs, and you you definitely have a pair of black fishnets. Um, between it and your skull, uh, you're super, super punk. I, you just see Barbara look down at the legs and go, "Yes, this is what I wanted." Behold, and he just does like a kick, a kick, a kick across the room, yeah. <laughs> like throwing the legs up all the way up, jumps up, does a spin and does a split and holds two little tendrils so out. So I will them. say this, as long, anytime you are going to make a check that requires charisma, as long as you can tell me how it involves your legs, you can get yes. the putt plus two, one for each leg. Oh, um, oh my gosh, <laughs> yes. Is how we'll do the mechanics for this, but you have to be able to tell me how the legs are involved in your charisma check. I will 100% do okay. this. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Um, and oh, you see oh, as Barbie. on Barbie. Tap, tap, oh, tap, you tap. you never skipped leg day. No, I have not. Who wears shorts, shorts? Barbie Who wears, wears shorts, short shorts? shorts. <laughs> Y'all, we've broken D and D. I'm I'm fairly certain Wally just won D and D. Uh, we, yeah, it's done. It's too. over. Okay, so as you t we hear the small shoes of of Barbie tap 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 across the floor, showing off the full range of dexterous motion um, and you know abilities of charisma that they hold. You. Oh. See, the crystal ball begins glowing, a small faint light like a star in the distance, deep from inside of, the, of this, uh, this, uh, this orb. And it starts to grow, and as it grows, light kind of begins to fill the space. I'm going to have all of you make a dexterity check. Charisma okay. legs do not help with dexterity, only <laughs> charisma. <laughs> okay, a 9 and an 11, not too bad. Seven. Seven. Nope. You are all very much distracted by the new set of legs that Barbie adorns as the crystal ball and it explodes. Glass shatters everywhere. It lodges itself all across the mechanisms and stone, which are no longer like turning. And where it once stood, now there is a burned out place. Um, this is glass shards. I don't know if anybody is um, immune or resistant to piercing damage. I uh, am. I think I am. Dang it. No. No. Oh, no. Oh, nope, no. Slashing, slashing it's only seven points for those of you 
um, that aren't taking any resistances. That's not bad. I can bad. take that. Yeah, I can take yeah, that. Yeah, not bad. Well, uh, so we're going like with, uh, so three points of resistance then? Three points of resistance, if yeah. Because mm -hmm, all of you failed the check. Um, and so, um, as it, some of you may absorb some glass shards from this crystal ball, where it once stood is now this charred oh. out kind of crater as it exploded. The pillar it was standing on is long gone. And in its place is is a, a, a humanoid. Uh, he is dressed from top to bottom in the finest of garb. Uh, his poofy pants to his uh, kind of uh, foppish shoes and uh, stockings. Uh, he stands there in a pose and he says, Mighty thanks, my great oozes. I am William Shagspeare, the greatest bard in all the land. I have been trapped by the mad mage for over a millennia, answering to his wishes, for you know that the only way to make fantasy reality is in fiction. Wait, you're yeah. William Shakespeare? I am the great William Shakespeare. Oh my God, guy. In like, in like, clack, 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 walks over to the other slide. <laughs> <laughs> guys, this is William Shakespeare. When I was a full demon lord, you would have to you would have to reserve them weeks ahead just to have them appear in your court. Oh, really? Oh, yes, indeed. Why? They are truly someone we should have on our side. Would you like to join the union? I'm going to be all this great oozes. I cannot understand your squash language. You sound uh, like somebody gurgling water and... Uh, but I can say that I am in great debt to you. Hmm. How do we communicate with them? Hmm. Uh, does anybody know how to write? Yes. Wait a minute. Oh, no, that's an urge. No, he does not. <laughs> but he will say yes. <laughs> um... She's going to, uh, Brihilda's going to kind of ooze over to him and hold up. Uh, we were four floors down from the dining hall. Uh, two. Two floors down. This, these two little, like, prongs stick up. And then she points up. He looks up at the city and goes, yes, I shall ascend the great tower, find my way, and... Trick my brother upon his return. Little like hand. Wait, a second. Wait hold on a second. Lump with a Wait, finger. Hold, hold, oh, hold on a second. Wait. Yeah, it's, it's his he brother. Just, it's his brother, and <laughs> he like waves a waves a leg menacingly at this bard. You sibling of the mad mage, I will make sure you will perform Cain and Abel-like actions and <laughs> slay your brother with your bare hands, be it with a rock upon the head or a knife in the back. Um, I'm gonna have you make an intimidation check. Um, and since you're pointing at him with your leg, you can take the <laughs> plus two. For also, that, uh, oh they are squatting God. menacingly too. They're doing squats, <laughs> so it looks really menacing too. Was... Your tea bagging is what. Yes. I'm <laughs> straight, straight. That's, that's what I'm getting out of this. Yeah, that's what you're doing right now. Okay. Yes, that's it. <laughs> My strange oozy friend, I do not understand the words that you speak, but your legs—they. Oh they... Plus two is it minus two? They are oh. in fact. Oh Rather off-putting. Um, I would like to write a song about them. Um, it shall be a tale of horror. They wrote on minus four, so a plus <laughs> a minus two with the. So plus two he goes. I take your squatting motion as a sign of good faith and friendship. I shall hug you now. What? What are you? What are you doing? I, no. I shall embrace you with the oh. <laughs> with the warm touch of William Shakespeare. Oh, okay. Um, they're they're going to hug me. What? what <laughs> he I comes do? over, um, and and tries. You don't really have a bodily form, so it's like, uh, the head gets probably a pat and a rub, and there might be some um embracing of your charismatic um limbs. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, that's. Uh... Oh, that's just is a leg kind of guy. This is uh, a little awkward. Thing? And out, and like yeah. a tender like slaps his hand. <laughs> now watch it. There, buddy. <laughs> okay. These legs were made for walking. And he does like a fancy kick. Oh, he steps back. My, 
I have seen a fair share of ladies dance in my time, but I've never seen them. What are you? Right, you can't talk to me. And he says, it doesn't matter. I shall ascend the Great Tower and meet you all at the top. Oh, hey, that's nice. Y'all are just going to let him go wander? <laughs> yeah. Great. Okay, Willem Shack, he says, um, you see, he pulls out a small book from his pocket and a quill. And he, he kind of douse, douses it on his tongue and he begins to like, uh, as he begins to write. Um, my, I haven't been inspired in so long. Um, as he writes his next great, well, you don't know if it's a tale or a song or what it is, uh, but he ascends, uh, ascends up the stairs and you know that he now has to go back through the button mechanism room so it could take him some time. Um, oh, yeah. He doesn't seem yeah. like a very bright fellow. No, um, not so much. Yeah. No. Um. I don't believe they will make it past the room with the buttons. I believe they'll probably be, be stuck there for a oh, while. Yeah, we'll probably find him in there on the way back up. Yeah. I mean, with our superior intelligence, we were able to figure out that room easily. But Yeah. Oh, hey, that reminds me. Can you still climb up the walls? Can I still climb up the walls with my spider climb? Um, yes, but you can't use your legs. Okay, you have to so use your body and just drag your legs. <laughs> so can your, just yeah. <laughs> Runs up to a wall and throws the upper half of the body yeah. against it, and then climbs up the wall. And the legs are just dangling there. Yeah, <laughs> they can come with you. Um, I imagine that you're not quite as sneaky that way, uh, and your legs probably don't fit in tight spaces. So, um, you know, you, you'll have some struggles. But the fact of the matter is, your physical body still sticks. You can't take that away from you. Yep, there you go. That's <laughs> oh, fabulous. Yeah, um, there it is. Um, so. Uh... Maybe we should like get some signs or like take out a, a an ad for our you know union meetings. That way, in the oh. future, we can just point people to the sign instead of trying to communicate to them by just interpretive dance. Oh, sure. Can you write? No. I was I hoping it. someone else could. Lassie, uh, you said you could. Maybe I'm good at reading, but. That's also technically a different skill to writing. Okay, it's basically try. the same thing. <laughs> okay. Oh, it sure seems the same to me. I don't okay, know. Let me give it a go. Um, I don't have any paper on me, though. I have... Oh, wait. I have them. Oh, wait, the here. <laughs> <laughs> I snatched one out of the air. A look, piece of paper. I Look here. Is it plain paper? Because I feel like you're panicking it's, with like it's a page not, of a book. <clears throat> when you grab it, you can see it's like struggling because it's wanting to get put away because it has like writing or something on it. it's like notes and babble from the mad mage um i think i would i can just use this thing i have some paper in me right, right now hold on you just let oh. this one go and reach in and pull up the, the like map of the rituals on it <laughs> that we've taken and like turn it on its back yeah. to write on the back of it <laughs> yeah and you flip it over and it's a clean space so you you can um attempt to write in this case you speak common yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you would just like anybody else. There's no check for you to be able to to write in common. So, kind of mimicking um, William, seeing that William like took out a quill and touched their tongue to it, they whip out a, 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 a pseudopod and touch there where the tongue would probably be <laughs> and start writing on <laughs> writing with their thing on it. What do you write? Um, come to our. Um, would you like to join our union meeting? Our union. Yes, no, maybe. And it's just like, it's just the boxes. Yes, no, maybe for them to, um, to um, mark it. And underneath it says, if yes, meet us in the hall. That's our new <laughs> union hall. And I just <laughs> pass that along. Are How does you... this look? Yeah. Well, oh, that looks great. It's all Greek to me. <laughs> Spot eye, but, oh, add in the part that there will oh, be and punch. punch. Yes. And pie, okay. There will be punch. And pie. Um, Who's making the punch and pie? I guess that's a problem for another day. Yeah. Yeah. We'll figure yeah. that out. <laughs> yeah. We'll figure out later. Betty seems like they're probably good at cooking. And maybe, maybe Louis. I feel like Louis's got. Uh, I feel like Louis would have some. Yeah. Shows. Louis could help with the punch to at least that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. And I have that. And I have like multiple boxes for like, um, so that most people can be like, yes, no, maybe. So it's not just one person replies and says and that's it um because yeah i think this is the best i can do uh, with a bit more time i could probably get a whole like 
graphics thing going on you know graphic design is actually my passion but I don't have time to do it right now <laughs> yeah graphic yeah. design is so- my passion <laughs> Gosh, I've just learned all sorts of things about you today, Classy. Thank you. Yeah, I'm 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 an ooze of many layers. I just oh, haven't really had a chance to yeah. really expand until now. It's, it's funny. Not just a shame. It's funny you say expand because you do expand. Yeah, I know. I just realized I, I that was on purpose, but when I said it, I chuckled to myself a little bit because it was a good one. It's very clever. Thank you. So should we see what's in the next room? Yeah. Thank you. Gonna roll up the paper and like stick it back into that ooze. <clears throat> you- I say we put Classy in charge of recruitment. <laughs> ah, that is an excellent idea. I yeah, not, okay. I am not good at interpretive dance, and I think yet. you were incredible. Oh, I, I, I think I just need more practice. You got oh. legs, and you know how to use them. Thank you very much. <laughs> and he like struts kicks. <laughs> down the next flight of stairs <laughs> yeah. as you strut click kick down the next flight of stairs um in fact Bruhilda, you have already been in this room you actually skipped this layer by accident flipping all those switches it is the room with all of the statues of the of the people that were like frozen right. and the strange um uh uh like well, you don't know what it is, but it's a strange room. It has a large uh, rune um, on the floor. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, all of you kind of see it as you come down. I'm going to take us over to a map so you all as well can not see it. Um, so, why, why are you this way, roll 20? Oh, no, wrong one. Um, there is a large green glowing rune in the floor. Uh, and against the wall, you can see there are petrified or like stone-like figures um, of, of various humanoids uh, kind of frozen in, in place uh, along the wall. Cla- Classy, I'm going to give this to you because you made all of the roles for the uh, the like ritual that you found in his secret wizard hidey hole. Mm-hmm. The emblem that from what you can tell drawn on the ground here as you come down the stairs and kind of like look over and see it is the same as one of the symbols that is in the center of his large like ritual. There's a possibility this is actually the ritual space that he's kind of been preparing for. Okay. Oh, I, I recognize that symbol. Um, have no idea what it means, but it was on this and then pulls out the, yeah. the paper uh, from inside them. Ah, uh, yes, the scroll that I obviously knew the chant the 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 incantations to he oh sure not. yeah he, uh, he faked it but it just got halfway through okay so what do we do um i'll be honest i don't know we could just keep walking okay <laughs> head to the stairs <laughs> I think we may as well go make sure that the door is shut. Don't want to yeah. let in a draft. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah, that's a good, that's a good <laughs> idea. That is a good idea. You all pass through this ominous area that emanates this disgusting green color of what is probably dark and evil magic. And in the end, it doesn't seem to phase you. It doesn't look like the ritual is going on. And you know what? Be damned. All of these adventurers along uh, the wall here, uh, they're lost to time. There's nothing, absolutely nothing that we can do for them. Um, as you come down to the next layer um, and ascend the stairs on the other side, this room is a, like lit up. There's a lot of fire and it's very warm. And the only thing that you can find in here is a small, I guess you could call it a stage. It's like a, a, a raised platform about three three stairs high that could be used for a variety of things. Uh, at the moment, it has this light shining down on it. It kind of shimmers like starlight as if this could be used for everything from Mad Mage karaoke night to, you know, um, you know, maybe even your union uh, announcements. I think this is a perfect place for when we hold our union meetings outside of a union hall from upstairs. Yeah, and I think it'd be a good place for, um, you know, we need to have some kind of team building between our union members. I think it'd be great to actually have karaoke here. You know, I think this could be kind of romantic. Ooh. Wait, I hope you don't mind me asking, but do you have a romantic partner? Oh, no, no. It's <laughs> been a while since Mr. Slime passed. Mm. My condolences. Oh, 
thank you. It's okay. We had a good life together. Mm. I I kind of want to know what happened to Mr. Slime. <laughs> yes. What happened to him? Flashback. Yeah, flashback. <laughs> yeah. What happened to Mr. Slime? Bruhilda is sitting on a shelf next to another vial. And this vial contains a golden elixir within it. And the two bottles sit side by side and every once in a while, one of them will bloop <laughs> up against the glass next to the other and bloop until one day the gold elixir bloops and knocks the cork out of his bottle and it slides up the inside of his bottle and reaches over to the cork next to him and plucks it. And from that bottle comes a reddish and goldish elixir and the two mix and hook around each other like that. And from that day forward, they remain side by side hooked together, no matter how often the horrible duper mage tried to split them apart, they remained locked together. Until one day, adventurers journeyed into the dungeon. Oh no, not those damn adventurers. Those damn adventurers. And the two of them saw the adventurers come into the room and each jacked, decked back down into their jars thinking, oh, this is our chance to feast. And so they each assumed a different color and looked like different elixirs. And his was selected. And the adventurer lifted it to her lips and took a long gulp and began to quiver and shake. And she regurgitated the golden elixir and it fell to the floor. And with her dying move, she summoned into her hand a flame bolt. Oh no. And used it against Mr. Ooze, rendering him completely and utterly evaporated oh he's so oozeless now wow stood an ooze tail for the ages it is an ooze tail it was a, it was an ooze tail for the ages their their ooze is eternal <laughs> their ooze is eternal and as we flash back and there's just a moment we see maybe brew hilda lost in thought um oh. this sad sad moment of losing mr slime you're brought back into this place Oh, goodness. It's yeah, F's F in chat. There. <laughs> Is everything okay, Brie Hilda? Oh, yeah, just just remembering a wonderful ooze. Oh. He, was, he was a good ooze. I hate mages. Yes, I That's hate fair. mages also. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, kind of I've worked with some good ones. Mouth was okay. They actually created me. So I guess. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm sure they were lovely. <laughs> um, depending well, we, on who you ask. As oh. as you said that, depending <laughs> on who you ask, another book like <laughs> zooms overhead. Another one, the opposite direction, clearly trading places as they go up and downstairs. Still full chaos. They knock things over. Uh, one of the books flies over a torch and gets a little charred on an edge. Um, with no care. But I'm going to have you all roll for perception which is a wisdom-based role if you don't have perception. Yeah. Oh! Ooh. Oh! Oh, not bad. I, have I think it's going to be classy. Classy, yeah. As you say that last, you hear something. That last, uh, you know. And it's the sound of like... Tick, tick. Tick, tick. Like something's tapping on something. Um, if you follow your, your gnawing ears... Um, <laughs> uh, out of this door here and back out kind of where you entered, you see that there are two more doors and something is like kind of tapping and scratching on the other side. You have not um, actually entered this space yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Classy would just, as he says, um, depends on who you ask. Um, hey, do, does anyone hear that? The tapping? And just no, like, what? Just no, I do not hear it. I think it's coming from this way and points are like a pseudopod into that, that yeah, direction we, starts it, heading there. As you make your way over, the door is open. There's no like lock on it or anything. And as you come in, there's only one thing in this room. A 
Some might call it an altar. Uh, some would call it a pedestal. Uh, but it sits up about three feet off the floor. And from your angle, it's kind of hard to see. But there is a roundish object, not a crystal ball. It's not shiny, um, sitting in the center of it. Um, hey, could any of you help me up? <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. Little You're boost. just sitting on my back. Oh, wait, no, Shivers got you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of tall. I, I'll just pick you yeah. up. You kind of lift it up and shiver. You and uh, Classy are able to see as you look over. Um, there is an oblong uh, kind of circular or, or like object there. You don't know what it is, but if you want to, you can roll a nature check, which is intelligence based. Yeah, I'll do you that. might have seen this in a book, Classy. So maybe you could take a, an advantage on it. You, you've, you're well read. Yeah, I'll take advantage. I my intelligence is awful. <laughs> um, oh 18, wow, that's a nat twenty. As soon as soon as you see this, you know what it is. You've only seen ever seen pictures of it, and they're very very rare. But something scratches from the inside of this circular object, which is in fact a very large egg. Can I tell what kind of egg from this? Or is it At an 18, which is a nat 20 for you, I would say, yes, you can tell what kind of egg it is. Um, it is going to be a dragon's egg of some kind. Oh. That is why you don't see these very often. It seems oh. that he's been hiding one and waiting, waiting for it to hatch. Oh, my. Okay. So this. Okay. Um, it's a dragon egg. Can we eat it? No, 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 don't eat it. Technically. Don't eat it. Oh, this is terrible. Okay. Oh, I've got this. Hang on a second. And she spider climbs up onto the top of the egg and just kind of drapes herself over the egg. <laughs> okay. Jess, you just get warm now. You just, you just relax. Mama's here. There we go. Okay. I'm really glad you knew what to do there because I have never once been responsible for an infant in my whole life. Oh, I've raised a whole bunch of little elixirs. Oh, uh, yes. Oh. <laughs> actually, They're just precious. You know what, Barbie? You can see. You're on legs now. Uh, you're tall oh, yes, enough to right, actually yes. see over this. Just barely, like a gnome. Right, just mm -hmm. barely, but you can actually see up and over. And uh, now that uh, Bruhilda is up there, Bruhilda, you drape over it almost the way you might put like melted chocolate over an egg, uh, you yeah. know, like an Easter egg or something, as it kind of just like, and as you touch the the concrete or the stone uh, that it sits on around it, uh, you create a nice uh, little seal. Um, it is moving. You can feel it kind of vibrating, but it has not broken through the egg. It looks like it will hatch soon. Um, I imagine you you all imagine the mad mage would want to be back. So maybe he planned his vacation around it or you knew he would be back in enough time. Um, but it will hatch within the week or two weeks. Mm, it seems like this has got a little while on it. Perhaps I could come back and and roost on it later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, okay, a thing that it, not many people understand about a mouse, um Mel's decimal classification system is that actually takes into account other things like artifacts as well. And oh. according to the classification system, this should not be on this floor. This is one of the rarest uh, things you can come across. This should be at the very least on the um, penultimate floor or the top. So uh, I guess after this, we probably I might need help with this, but I might need help lift, taking this up to the, <laughs> to the top floor. If um, we had like some th kind of uh, like warm thing that we could wrap it in i could carry it up but i'm very cold and i don't want to hurt it if it needs warmth i know we have a warm thing oh. i am a warm thing just pick me up that yes yes hold on <laughs> um wraps you... tendrils around and and the goal is to go up with it to take it farther up or are you just going to take it with you for now Bruhilda? Oh, let's just take it with us and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a another item added to the ooze collection as a dragon's egg. Now, Bruhilda, you're not a very large ooze. So at this point, uh, this egg takes up the majority of your surface space. Yes. Um, uh, you're a little bit more bulbous than you were before as you <laughs> along your 
you know, you're the size of a dragon's egg. Uh, yeah. But uh, if if uh, you're getting some help in terms of movement from Barbie, maybe carrying you with these these daft legs, um, you all uh, are able to move forward pretty easily. And you can feel every once in a while that like kick or something rolls around on the inside. Oh, yeah, oh, it's been a while. I don't. I forgot how wonderful this sensation is. Oh my <laughs> goodness. And oh. you trops down unless anybody has anything else they want to do here. Oh no, is Zoom acting uh, up on me? No. Nope. If nothing else. It, it, it did for a second. It did for a second. Yeah, Zoom got a little wonky on me. It, it looks like it's coming back. I'm going to give it a second. Um, but you head uh, basically down another flight of stairs. Um, surprise, surprise. You have to be getting close to the bottom by now. One would think. Yeah, one would Yeah, think, you yes. got to. If you're keeping count, you, it's 13 to 16 floors. You got to be getting close. You've got to be. Um, now, as you come down these stairs, it's a lot darker. The The power is off, if you would. He has shut these areas down. And the first room that you come down to smells of herbs and uh, various spices and ingredients. Um, there is nothing cooking or bubbling. Um, actually, let me take the... I do not need dynamic lighting on this. And I'm going to move you all over to here. Um... You come down this flight of stairs here at the top left, um, and you see there are beautiful tables. Oh, is it still dark? Strange. But yeah, still dark. Still dark, yeah. yeah. Oh, hang on. Why, roll 20? Dynamic lighting. Off. Did I do it? Uh, our, tokens, our tokens aren't on the map. But but you can see the map. Okay, there we yeah, go. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Great, perfect. I wonder if I oh I can bring y'all back over in terms of tokens. So uh, this upper left map for all of you, and I will make sure chat also gets a nice little uh, view of that. Um, you can see there. You can smell it immediately in the air. There seems to be four tubs of something like that's been left to concoct or brew or rise or whatever he's been making. This looks to be some kind of alchemy lab. Is the simplest and easiest. Um, uh, Bruhilda, you know this very well. These are the usual places that you're put to hide uh, or to protect. On average, uh, you don't usually get put at the top penthouse, uh, but to the uh, this is this is without a question an alchemy lab. Oh, it's a lab! Well, isn't this nice? Oh, I wonder if there are any other doppelixers here. Hello, hello. Uh, there's no response. Okay, well, I guess it's just me then. Okay. Now, I know very little about dragon eggs um, and kids, I suppose, in general, but I'm fairly certain there's something like some kind of mixture or formula that they're meant to drink. <laughs> um, so it might be, maybe you could throw something together to have it prepared for when the baby's born. Ah, yes. A delightful protein slurry for the infant dragon to <laughs> supple upon. Oh yeah, like food. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, I'll tell you what, Shiver. Um. Yeah. Why don't Why don't you and uh and Classy head over to that big round uh table there, and uh, let's see if you put a little bit of the purple in with the green. I'm sure that'll taste lovely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's do it. Go over and grab the <laughs> ingredients and. Put them in a little, uh, you know, vial for mixing and swirl it around. And then oh, I'll... a little orange for vitamin C. Oh, you're right. Don't want to get any sick babies. That's for oh, sure. Oh, no scurvy dragon. Don't, don't forget to add in red because red is a cool color. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we'll mix it all up. Splash of red food coloring. And we get a little bit of a, a shimmy shake from Shiver uh, as it... Um, Begins to mix up uh, whatever you've got this concoction. Um, who has the highest intelligence? Not me. Not me. <laughs> it might be me. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm my intelligence is a six. six <laughs> yeah, that is worlds better than me. <laughs> yeah, okay. Since Shiver uh, is is just mixing the the concoction, we'll let Classy make the roll, and with help from your friends, you can take advantage together. All of your ooze powers combined. <laughs> That's actually pretty decent. 16. Oh. Oh. Okay. Um, 
To your surprise, Shiver does a great job, really solid, icy hand of, of the perfect proportions. Uh, not, not, it, it turns out great. And you know that it's right when it poofs out that little bit of like smoke out of the top. And sure enough, as soon as it has been really good and shook up by a uh, Shiver, uh, it kind of comes out the top, but classy. You know that dragons cannot survive on potion alone, that they do require sustenance of meat and or blood. So this will not be complete until you can find some proper uh, body parts to, to put into this. Hey, um, Shiva, do you have any of those eyeballs left over? <laughs> yeah, I got maybe like two or three dozen of them, I think. <laughs> okay, could you hand them over? Oh, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> and I'll just just <laughs> slurp out like like again. I'll go teapot style to start. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dropping um, out little eyeballs. I imagine when classy asks, they all kind of turn in your ooziness and and look in a certain way. And sure enough, you teapot out wunk, wunk three uh, eyeballs into the concoction. They sit at the bottom like little olives, and it turns this deep, dense red color. And classy, you nailed it. It's done. Perfect. The whole it's the perfect baby dragon concoction. <laughs> this is exactly what I think they call it baby dragon formula. And this is exactly it. We did it honestly perfectly. Um I think we're gonna be really good parents to this dragon. Yeah. Yes. It's we a very lucky this. dragon baby. Yes, we shall raise this dragon whelp well into a mighty beast that shall rain terror across the land as their wings shall scrape the heavens and their breath shall melt the enemy's flesh off their bones bleaching them white and they'll show their parents a lot of love because oh. we're gonna show them a lot of love that too yes we will love them as as if they were our own Oh, this is so much fun. I'm so glad I met all of you. We're just, we're really coming together. We really are. This is probably the most fun I've had in a while. <laughs> and as oh, you get, shucks. as you, you said, this is the most fun I've had in a while. All of you here down the flight of stairs that comes um, up into this room. So this one over here. The sound of footsteps, humanoid footsteps and voices. Uh, there may be more people trying to scour this place for whatever uh, treasures it may hold. It seems that everybody got the memo that the mage was going on vacation. Um, you all have some time to react before they make it to this floor. What would you like to do? Quick, hide us. <laughs> hide the baby. Yeah, protect the baby. And I think we got to go shut the door really quick now. And I would like to slurp over to like hide right next to the entryway up the stairs so yep. that when they come up, I can just slurp against the wall and engulf whomever comes up first. Great. Uh, you quickly <laughs> over. Uh, we'll say you're in a bit of a blind spot as they come up because it is a, a kind of arch or curve. Uh, so they're not going to see you there. Um, everybody else is welcome to hide. Um, you can tell me how you do that. So, um, <laughs> Barbie would like to... Uh, <laughs> He heads over to one of the tables that are there and he puts his little skull half in the chair, but his legs kick up and swing over each other, folded over each other sexily and everything, just waiting there <laughs> for whatever is coming up the stairs. Obviously to lure them into a false sense of security before they just unleash attack upon them. Right. Hey, Barbie, <laughs> before you do that, could you put us in the planter over there? Oh, yes, I'll do that, too. I'll, I'll carry them over to the planter. <laughs> I have legs. And you put uh, Bruhilda with the egg, like, in this planter, trying to maybe make it look like a rock in the base or something yeah. like nope. that. You yeah. know, a very large, oversized rock. Oh what God. about Classy? Um, so this is Classy. I think you might have um, moved my token set of... Um, oh, did I move these. you? I'm so sorry. Yeah. Uh, let me Let me switch. Boop. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, um, you're you're in the chair. The skull is staring at the door. <laughs> I think. Oh, that's a tough one. I think I would um, classy. Honestly, I made you move my token, but I think it's gonna be the same thing. I think I'm gonna be here, but like, I think there's a pen right there. Or like, a yeah, or yeah, kind. sure. So like, I would just like go on the table and just sploosh out, so I look like a spilled ink stain. Just, like, oh, nice! Ink. Like right gonna, under it. Like, yeah. Yeah. And as soon as you all see classy, like flat into this spilled ink puddle uh you hear 
the sound of the feet as they one by one come up the stairs. First, though, is a small set of feet. Oops, let me let me has it. It's a small set of feet. Uh, the creature can't be but maybe three feet tall, furry. You can actually see whiskers first as a rat folk peers its little head around the corner. I'll show you what he looks like here. Um, when World 20 loads, there he is. Show to everyone. He kind of like, <laughs> as he kind of peers around and he begins taking the room in. Uh, he's just going to quickly roll a perception check. Um, I need everybody else uh, for the sake to roll a stealth check. Um, if you are in like your natural habitat, so for in this case, like class, you look like what you're supposed to look like. Uh, Bruhilda, unfortunately, you're not in your potions bottle, but um, I guess you have legs and a skull, so maybe you are a little bit easier hid because they don't even know that you're there. Um, and I said that you had a blind spot, so everybody but Bruhilda can make the uh, stealth check at advantage. Okay. Oh my god, mine was not great. <laughs> Awesome. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, you rolled a 14. Okay, so good news. Barbie, they don't see you, uh, this creature. Um, as it looks around the room, actually, the first thing it does not see is is Shiver, um, because you're kind of uh, peripherally speaking, and it kind of sniffs around, and he goes, yes, hey, it's, it's safe, everybody, come on. Um, as he kind of waves and more feet kind of enter the room as he creeps just past you, Shiver. Um, and then it sees this puddle of spilled ink. And he goes, oh no, somebody's so messy. Um, as from behind him, he's looking right at you. He doesn't know you what you are, but he sees the ink puddle. Um, next up comes a, uh, give it to me, uh, a... A half elf, um, so humanoid, much taller, uh, follows in. They carry some kind of musical instrument, like a flute type thing, that, a pan flute that hangs around their neck. Um, and following them is uh, what you can only imagine is a druid, simply by the smell of the dirt on them, if you can sense such things. Um, and they all kind of creep into the room. Um, and you hear the rat fall say, Sure was easy with the doors open. Do we get any kind of surprise round at this point? You sure you. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, if I can go first, I would like to, with a pseudopod, gesture back down the stairs. Watch out for that pothole as I move forward and engulf whomever <laughs> is closest in front of me. Um, that's either going to be the rat folk or the druid. Those are the closest ones to you. Um, uh, let's do let's do the the I druid. Place. I think. Let's okay. do the druid, I think. All right. Um, the druid it is. And you see uh, this druid is, there we go, is a half-orc. Large, but they, like I said, they kind of smell of the earth and nature. Um, so go ahead and make your attack with your pseudo. Uh, uh, it, well, it, it's a, a engulf attack, so I move into their space. Great. And then uh, they make a dexterity saving throw to see if they can avoid my attack or not. Probably cannot as a druid, but they can try. They can sure try. Um, man, roll 20 is real slow today, y'all. Apologize. Um, okay, they're gonna make a dexterity... Bleh. A seven. Okay, it's a fail. So... Yeah, they don't, they definitely don't see you. Um, I imagine actually the druid walks in and you hear this orc go, this uh, orc female go, Yes, this is so nice. So many potions and alchemy and herbs. A uh, and then they're gonna take 13 points of cold damage. As I engulf them, they can't breathe, they're restrained, and at the start of their turn, more stuff will happen. Yeah, and you, you brought that in that's like, I love, uh, um, as it just blew the pseudopod, uh, we will allow all of you to also take an, um, like, free action before we roll for initiative, but we are going to roll for initiative now that you have attacked. Them. Um, is, is, like, the rat folk near the chair that I'm in? Um... Yeah, the rat folk is the closest. He's kind of stepped in. He's leading the way because he's clearly their rogue or their so, yeah. What happens is the rat folk just sees the chair turn around like some dramatic sting. The chair turns around and you see the tiny little skull with these two large, attractive looking legs folded over each other. And they can't understand this who's saying this, but they say, ah, yes, 
welcome, gentlemen. I was a certain you would arrive. And they unfold one leg and just fold it back over top of each other. <laughs> and <laughs> so as they do that, they slap a leg out to kick the rat folk in the face. God. The rat, you see the rat go, oh my, I'm, those, are, those are some nice legs. You, uh, uh, as you make the <laughs> kick. Um, so go ahead and um, make the, uh, the uh, leg attack, I guess, which is really, we'll use your pseudopod attack. Yeah, my pseudopod, yeah, yeah, let's go with that. Um, oh, that's then. a hit without question. I can't get around that. Oh yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, so I deal. Let's see here. I deal one d six fire. I deal two one d six plus twelve and one d six fire damage. So okay. Uh, mm-hmm. So I wanted to mark this. How much they have left after? Do it. Take it. Take it. So they take four points of reg- of bludgeoning damage and five points of fire damage. So seven total. Yep, seven nice. total, and it is now grappled by me. So oh my god. You just see these two gorgeous sexy legs kick this rat folk in the face and then wrap their legs around this rat folk and just pull them in towards Because the I know I'm having feelings. So many feelings. <laughs> just uh, relax, it will all be over soon. <laughs> I have dreamed of this day. Why does it hurt so much? Um, <laughs> As this poor rat folk is now in a leg uh, a bind uh, with these very, very uh, sexy fishnet legs. Um, oh, also, it yeah. needs to make a con save. Oh, damn. Okay. Yeah. Uh, our rat folk these road six needs to make. are taking Yeah, lives. these. <laughs> <laughs> you said a deck save? Uh, con save. Con save. Even worse for him. Okay. Uh, yeah, he doesn't get any bonuses to that, so just flat. No. Okay, it fails. So it takes, let's see, it takes uh, 16 points of life draining damage as I just absorb all its life into me. How do you kill this rat? Oh my oh god. My god. <laughs> so these sexy legs are just resting around this rat folk's legs and shoulders, pulling them towards this ooze body as the tendrils wrap around it. And Barbiel's like, just relax, sweetie. It will all be over soon. As I drain life from its body into mine, and my as I drain the life, my body glows brightly as I just. Go, bloom, 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 bloom. I don't understand. It's so good. As slowly but surely, this rat folk just kind of like, and then it freezes um, with the. Uh, I'm going to make a really adult reference. Do y'all remember that movie from James Bond where the chick totally strangles the guy on the boat with her legs? Oh, yes. that? oh, yeah. That's what I yeah. imagine. And he's like, and he's like frozen. And this is the rebel. It's like, but there's a <laughs> smile, a, a very, a very toothy smile that remains on his petrified body oh as you God. drain the life from him. The rat folk is no more. I will say this, uh, since you are in a, a very, personal grapple with it uh it's carrying a lot of stuff uh this oh. this there's a lot of things on the bobbles and such on this rat folk for your reference later what about Bruhilda and classy do you know what you want to do in your free action which is going to probably not even get to initiative <laughs> um, um go ahead i don't have a plan so far so if you have anything great you, can go. you were a great distraction for the rat folk since you know you were the first one <laughs> notice if it means anything yeah um, Brihilda just kind of whispers to the egg, okay, baby, you just stay here. <laughs> Mama's going to try to distract the nice, well, not so nice people. Okay. All right. You just wait. And she slinks into her bottle and changes to a different potion. Oh, do you want to, it's a random roll, right? So what potion? Yes. Okay. I am going to have you roll a 10, a D10. Okay. Um, I've got a random roll potion table this time, so I don't have to. What's your number? Nine. Nine. This is a juice of roll a D100. A juice of D100? That one's going to, oh no, that one's going to be a 66. So close. This is the juice of, where are the 60s on this list? It literally skips over all the 60s. Oh no, it doesn't. I it, The sixes look like fives. Just kidding. 66. Um, this is a juice of invisibility. It makes the user, oh no, I'm so sorry. I'm never going to be able to say this word. This is the juice of snoffin fruit. 
makes the enemy takes damage as they deal it to the user. So you turn into a juice of, honest to God, snoffins fruit. Um, I'm going to put it in chat because I can barely read it. Um, I don't speak German, which I'm guessing is what that <laughs> word means. And you turn into this kind of um, orange tinged uh, strength potion is really what it is, or at least what they think it's going to be, but it's actually just right. the opposite. It means when they hit you, they deal damage to themselves. Um, the juice of Snoffenfried. <laughs> I would like to save my action following that to use my telepathic urge to mm. make them come for, if they come over to the egg, I'm going to use telepathic urge to make them come after me instead of the egg. Ooh. Okay. Um, at this point, uh, there's only one of them with full free uh, movement and action, uh, but nicely done. Uh, and you kind of pose as this perfect bottle of this, what they're going to think is a strength potion. Um, mm -hmm. Classy last call before we roll for initiative. Oh, you're muted. Yeah, I forgot to hit the unmute button. Um, I think all Classy is going to do is expand, like still looking like a puddle, but now you just see like the puddle seems to be spreading across the table. Um, as I go from tiny to small in size. Nice. Um, a little bit, be, whoop. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a little bit larger. Um, and you see actually the bard notices this, uh, this half elf bard, and she goes, um, she goes, Oi, is it just me or is the egg moving? <laughs> that is <laughs> the free action. And as they say that, um, of course, one of them is engulfed in frozen ooze. The, uh, this bard is like, oh, and reaches for their pan flute, knowing that they're going to have to possibly have to play their way out of this. Uh, let's get initiative rolls. 16. Um, I am going to put the druid last because they are currently actually held. Um, so I will put them at the end. They can't actually roll for initiative. Uh, they lost that opportunity. So the only one that can really roll is the bard. Um, the bard rolls for initiative. Um, oh, the first one is a 10. So first up in our order is going to be our ink guardian. So you get a little bit larger as you see the bard points at you and they go to reach for their pan flute. <gasps> Excuse me, clearly getting ready to pet cast magic. And uh, I get to grow a bit larger again at the start of my turn. Mm -hmm. So I go from small to medium. Okay. And at this point, it's kind of hard to be just a medium size ink stain on the table. So it's going to group up again to be their little gloopy or medium gloopy self. And they're going to move on over to um, to this bud with the whole intention of being like, um, this is nothing personal, but we have a baby to feed and they <laughs> enjoy meat. So you're going to have to be the meat. <laughs> 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 and I'm going to uh, attack them with my pseudopods. And okay. now that I'm medium size, I can multi-attack. So I can actually attack twice. Ooh, nice. Very good. Um, very good. I'm going to zoom in just a teeny uh, smidge. For 18 this. for the first hit and 17 for the second. 18 for the, the, both of those will hit this bard, even though they are wearing a chain shirt. I'm going to say, Bruhilda, you're over here. So you can uh, actually be seen by them. There you okay. go. So um, the first one does um, four bludgeoning damage and 11 acid. Ooh. And the second does five bludgeoning damage and six acid. And so total 15 and 11 makes, wow, 26, 26 points of damage. Um, hmm. Wowzer. Uh, so that would be, and then another six makes that, um, Okay, uh, it that that hurts a lot. Oops, it didn't like my numbers. Um, let's try that again. There we go. Uh, doesn't like it at all. Um, as you uh, it, it reaches and you can tell that she's in a panic and she's trying to like, play on this flute as you whap whap uh, and begin smacking into it. She's like ah, uh, oh, it hurts. Uh, as she's trying to get the rest of her team, but she looks over and realizes in this moment that their dear dear rat folk is dead. Um. And it's she okay. Kind of this cries is for the out. next generation, for the betterment of the next generation. It's okay. As you just whipping, they're just ah, hearing gurgling yeah. from them. But um, you do quite a lot of damage to this bard, um, and they are not able to move. You guys have kind of locked them into this uh, this stairwell. Um, that takes us to. If I look at our initiative, I believe that actually takes us to uh, you, Barbie. Okay. Um... I am just going to look at this bard who is currently like locked in a nice spot 
and just say, Oh, precious bard who believes whose songs can fill warmth and heart to their fallen comrades. I shall fill you with the warmth <laughs> from my eyes. And two little motes of flame shoot out of their yeah. eyes <laughs> as I use my uh, launch moat ability. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, and then, wow. Yeah, this bard. Oh, yeah, that that's. Yeah, that. Yep. You hurl a moat. Mm hmm. I do one d six out of two your skull. Damage. Wow, that's a lot. Seven point. It's a nine points of fire damage. Wait, no, nine. I rolled that wrong. I rolled that wrong. It's if you one click the D6. word hurl moats on in the chat, it should roll. It should roll your damage. Fire. Yeah, yeah. Um, there we go. That's four points of fire damage. Four points of fire damage. And as the uh, bard goes to lift it up and it's, you know, fighting back this slapping uh, from this this uh, growing ooze, uh, you hurl a fireball right over Classy's head because you're tall enough now to do that with legs. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it smashes, boom, right into uh, the bard whose hair singes, who's like the fur, maybe the, you know, the hair on their ears goes up and she's patting herself out. Oh my God. Oh, uh, and she's kind of in a panic. Uh, she, she's basically a lonesome bard uh, now. Um, moving our initiative along, that makes it, I believe it makes it Shiver's turn. Shiver, it has not been the bard's turn yet, so uh, you're free to take action. Uh, yeah, so um, I think what we're going to do here is, uh, <clears throat> since um, the creature inside of me is just going to take damage passively as it spends time inside of me, I'll probably just look at the bard who's next to me and just uh, uh, smack him once or twice here with some uh, of my multi-attack action. Okay, yeah. You look over and you can see a fireball smashes her in the face. Classy is just like flailing away. Uh, go ahead and make an attack against the bard. You need a 15. I'll just be like, oh, hey, it looks like you got a little singe there. And I'll reach out with an icy pseudopod oh and God. smack him. Oh my God, another <laughs> slap. This poor bard is like... I don't know what's going on. Why are there so many oozies? Um, there's nobody to hear their cries and screams of confusion. Uh, As you roll freezing slam damage. Uh, wow. Nine points of damage. Nice. Um, that takes them. They're almost dead. Uh, she goes, please. I just I just was here to take stuff. I didn't know. I didn't know. Uh, she I handed her the me. union card. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, actually, I'm winding okay. up for my second multi-attack. Oh, I'm sorry, what? Union! Unionizer! I don't have a card! I do. Yes, he does. I just like card. to move past her down the stairs to block her escape. Okay, yeah, so that she can't go back up, or back down, you mean. Yeah, yeah okay. that way she can't get away from the union propaganda. The, 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 <laughs> <laughs> the bard is with you. Uh, how much damage does the bard take? Did I get that? Uh, at the start of its turn, it takes damage. It so, takes damage uh, then. Okay, perfect. So yeah, not yeah. yet. Yeah, and you block it off and, and um, you show the union sign. Yeah, I put yeah. it up and uh, it's like points out yes, no, maybe. <laughs> there's like a whole there's like a whole moment where she has to like read it and you can tell she goes, um, uh, do I want to join a union? Yes. No. Meeting on the eighth floor in the... She, she stops reading and looks around at all of the oozes surrounding her and she goes, you want me to join your ooze union? Your ooze union? Yes. Your ooze union? Like, nah, yeah, they all bomb. Wobble yes. <laughs> like a thumb, a, a sort of thumbs up. Kind of she like. goes, it, will you let me live? <laughs> yes. Wobble yes. <laughs> <laughs> She reaches out a finger and boops the yes box on this piece of parchment and goes, I agree to join your union. And you just see a finger, um, um, ink and Classy's finger come up and tick the yes box for them since they untouched it and then roll it back up. Great, wonderful. So I'm just going to go this way up to the eighth uh, floor and find the dining hall. Yeah, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go this way. Uh, because I'm free now and nobody's going to hurt me. Just gonna 
go away. And she like hobbles <laughs> off, trying to like, like looking around, like, is this a trick? Like she's, yeah, yeah, g- goonian. Um, she's like waiting on um, all of you to like change your mind. Uh, I don't think as a low level adventurer, this bard has ever experienced. Is is there any healing potions in the bag that I took from the rogue? Oh, wait a second. The only potion that can be seen uh-huh. is our dear, dear Bruhilda. Oh. And on the way over, uh, the bard goes, I'm just going to uh, take one of so I feel better, okay? Uh, and reaches out and, um, you know, because Bruhilda wanted to draw me and she's going to try to drink Bruhilda, thinking that it's like a strength <laughs> potion. Does Bruhilda still have the dragon's egg? It's, no, in it's in the it's in the planter. Okay. It's in the planter. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. It got set down. It's safe. Uh, so you look just like a strength potion or health potion of some kind sitting here. Um, do you let this elf drink you or this half elf drink you? Uh, no. Actually, wobble, what though. happens is there is there is because I took from the dining hall a spoon. There's a spoon inside the jar, uh, the the vial. <laughs> and it sticks up, um, her side out, it sticks up and just slaps her hand. <laughs> Ow, what is this place? It's so strange. I just wanted to feel better. I okay. just called it a sign again, dining hall, and just point, point to the dining hall. <laughs> right, I'm just going to go very injured to the dining hall. Okay, bye bye. Just going to, just you stay. I'm going to go this way. That's okay. Uh, and then as soon as she gets just far enough where she knows you can't lash out in a single round, bolts just runs <laughs> full speed legs carried this half elf up the stairs and you hear them like disappear they're gonna have to figure out how to get to the eighth floor uh backwards yep. of all of the things you have done but there's no telling uh maybe they'll make it maybe they won't now in this room is unfortunately all that is left is the dear dear uh <laughs> this poor uh little bar uh a druid that has been caught in shivers grasp uh it is their turn i believe no. It yes. did start, start an air turn, they take damage. Yeah, so go ahead and let's deal damage. <laughs> they rolled it's, it. Uh, 22. 22 uh, gold damage. Um, As she watches the, her half-elf friend run up and around the corner, only shiver, you recognize she tries hard to scream, to say, please help me, but it is just far too cold, and her whole body freezes <laughs> inside of you. And I'll just then kind of slurp her out on the ground and say, okay, in about two weeks, that'll be another friend. Oh, boy. (laughs) And as you frozen solid, like as cold as it can get, like dry ice level of cold, uh, just like, it's just like. (laughs) I gloop back over the egg. Collect your egg, uh, and the space kind of falls quiet, except for the light, like shh, of the cold letting off of this druid as it's going to thaw out over the next few days um, or week. You don't really know, but it seems that the this alchemy chamber or this alchemy lab is free of uh, anything trying to harm you. And you killed I, the next round of adventures. <laughs> I, okay. I I'm going to go downstairs and see if I can close that door because they were just letting people in, like you know, just interlopers and everything. Yeah, yeah they I'm just good. left the front door open. Yes, that's that's very frustrating. Probably menus are down there. Oh, and it's like so walks, rude. <laughs> walks down. Oh, wait, yeah. wait, wait, Barbie. Uh, oh, yes. Look at us. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, yep. <laughs> Picks everybody up. The the four of you plus your your soon to be hatched egg take to the stairs and go down from where the adventurers came from. And you can see that this place has been looted, um, pretty heavily. They clearly took what they wanted, but this seems to be a preparation chamber for food. This is in essence a kitchen. Rock a bite dragon in the ooze glop. When the wind blows, the oozes will flop. <laughs> when the bow breaks, the dragon will call. And down will come baby eggshells and all. You know that it really loves... Can you make a performance check? <laughs> I just want to know. Christmas. That's no, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, foreign ooze. This was delightful. Uh, you all know that this is the song that every 
uh, matriarchal ooze sings to their oozlings. Um, it's it's a comforting number. Uh, but for a dragon, maybe not quite so much. Um, and you can feel it moving around inside. Bruhilda, you take its movement how you would like. Um, you don't know if it oh, makes it happy or sad. Yeah. But. <laughs> oh, goodness, you're dancing. Yeah. Oh, this is actually yeah. perfect. That little one. What was um, that? This is perfect because now we can, obviously the baby dragon formula we made would be enough for maybe 10, 15 minutes. But dra baby dragons eat a lot. So we could probably yeah. get the remains of that rat folk and use that to make a bit more. Um, we've got some uh, utensils. The remains there. of the rat folk, they are pretty much drained of all their life essence. So Boy, we um, just need the meat. I mean, maybe there's a storeroom here in the kitchen. I could check and see if there's anything. Uh, oh, if it's if it's raw That's meat, I could keep it uh, refrigerated in my body for uh, a long time. Oh, that's a good idea, Shiver. Yeah. Yes, that is an excellent idea. So, Shiver, maybe you slurp over through this back door of the kitchen that actually goes into, like, the preparation chamber, not the bar itself, which is this kind of strangely circular area um and as you enter you do get the feeling that there is plenty of meat here there's actually quite a lot of it all along this wall being cured it's like salted and being it's kind of sitting there and being cured into mm. uh long-standing meat but this whole wall it looks like there are six large-scale chunks of meat maybe it's a haunch of something and like a breast of something else but you were correct yeah i'll grab uh you know maybe like one of those uh just one uh, we know where the rest are if we want them, any more of them, but I'll grab one and I'll, uh, you know, keep it nice and, and, and chilled in, in uh, my form. And uh, maybe I'll just kind of nibble off a little bit of the outside edges of it, just the skin. It's my favorite part. And then uh, leave the meat for, for uh, uh, the little baby dragon when it hatches. Oh, man. I think of a name, too. It's true. Yeah. It's a fine name for a black dragon. A name like Kyle. Oh, I love, oh, Kyle. I love Kyle. Oh, and it works for a boy or a girl. It yeah. does, yes. It Kyle, does. Yeah, great. Kyle, yeah. The family has chosen the <laughs> the dragonling will be named Kyle. Um, do you explore any more in here? It doesn't seem like there's a whole lot here. It's just food, bait, no potions. This is just like eating establishment. And like I said, a bar, which means that he probably could have company if the mad mage ever did. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think I'll take like two minutes just to search. I want to make sure that I know where like all the appropriate seasonings are. I want to, you know, make sure that I can have very well flavored food. Okay. Uh, well, the good news is as you search around, you real there are tons of barrels of ale. There in fact are six of them plus the one that's already been tapped in the center of the bar. Uh, you find a small collection of eggs. Uh, that are kind of being kept in a dark box so they don't go bad. Uh, and this shelf here has tons of spices and such. Cool. I think I'll grab one egg that we can keep next to uh, our, our soon-to-be Kyle so that uh, they've got a friend. And then um, I'll leave the rest of the eggs and then I'll uh, probably, you know, just get a, a, a smattering of, of various uh, seasonings to put on the meat that I'm holding on to. That way it can kind of uh, marinate and have time for all the, the flavor to get into the meat juices. All right. Yeah. Um, and as you... Uh search, you take some eggs, you pull all the meat off, you gather all of it. Uh, when sliver or Shiver comes back, they are full of food and eyeballs. Perfect. Okay. Ooh. So we never have to worry about <laughs> Kyle going hungry. I, I'm gonna, I don't suppose I just, there was any blood back there, was there? I will. The meat was pretty pretty empty of blood. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of already been uh, cooked, so it's just oh. really a matter of keeping it from going bad at this point. Sure. But I'll slurp over right next to you, Brihilda, and I'll kind of gender, gently uh, with a pseudopod hold out the egg. I found a friend for uh, little Kyle. Oh, isn't that sweet? And she'll kind of gloop around it <laughs> and pull it down and bring it down with the other egg. Ah, yes. Swink. Once Kyle awakens from their slumber into life, they shall see the weaker egg next to them and devour them, thus proving themselves to place themselves upon the top of the pecking order. <laughs> oh, no, that's why I brought the turkey. We could hatch a turkey, yeah, and they could be best buddies. Oh, well, that too, but it was more of a, of a thing to help young Kyle understand that they are a mighty black dragon. Oh, sure, sure. I think, I think that'll be your job, Barbie. 
making sure that they understand just how special they are. Oh, I will teach that child as if they are my own progeny. Perfect, yeah. And then I'll I'll handle all the cooking lessons. Oh, good. I'll read them bedtime stories and teach them how to read and write. Oh, that's lovely. And I'll be mommy. <laughs> Great. Okay, so... Like this to eat, though, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit peckish. Oh, yeah, there was a whole wall of these uh, birds up there. So I think just go, if you want some, they're hanging on the wall in there. Yes, please. And I'm, uh, I'm classically going to slink over and just consume anything they can because I'm hurting a little bit. Yeah, there's a <laughs> there's a, a, a shelf with some seasoning. Don't forget to season your meat. Trust me, I never forget. I like to keep them seasoned. I'm, I'm a big fan okay. of spices as well. I like just spicy foods. I like that. Well, Barbie, could, could you take me down near that rat man? Oh, of course. And I'll carry I'll carry them over to where back the over. Rat folk so rovers. the rat folk is definitely there. Um, and you're all able to kind of gain sustenance, if you would. So um, whether you're uh, you know, you pulled his life force, but he's still got some blood. He's got plenty of meat if you want to take him to for meat. Um, it's, it takes an ooze village to raise an ooze. <laughs> <laughs> It's um, gonna raise the first ooze dragon. Yeah, and so you are able to kind of go through, get the meat you need. There's a stockpile here because again, when was the last time the Mad Mage had company? Probably never. So he has all of this food, but it's really only f for him. Uh, and uh, you all kind of stock up. So if you're injured or damaged, you can roll a hit die for kind of revitalizing yourself. Okay, mm, that would be great. I'm pretty good because of that life force strain I did. Oh yeah, ten. Oh yeah, because you took his. Yeah, you took it back. Yeah. Did it actually right. roll? Okay, thirteen. I got three. Nice. Okay. Um. Yeah. Take your take your health back as you see fit. Um. Yes, that's not unusual. Thank you, chat, for your puns <laughs> today. Y'all are killing it. And while everybody oh. rolls those hit die and resuscitates, I want to remind everybody in chat that today we are supporting uh, supporting Jasper's game day. Um, just take a quick moment to let you know as, you know, in our last 30 minutes here, uh, please consider going to support this nonprofit. Uh, it is their mission to raise funds for suicide prevention and awareness, which I'm sure everybody can understand the importance of uh, and why it's such a great cause. And like I said, it's full of gamers and people in this industry who are out there trying to do good. So let's support them, their efforts, uh, and you can grab that link right there. Um, if anybody does donate today, let me know because I might make some things happen for all of you that donate. I know that goes to their general donate. Next week we'll have a special link, but uh, if you do donate, chat, let me know. Come back here. Maybe I'll make some things happen before today's done. Um... As you resuscitate, you are all feeling a lot better, uh, especially since you took a little damage here, a little glass shards there. Um, you have kind of um, brought yourself uh, back to some semblance of, of oozy life. And you take the stairs, I'm guessing, continually down. The next floor yeah. uh, also seems to be what some would consider a dining hall, but it actually... Um, even though it's got like tiled floor and stuff, it actually seems to be some kind of, and Classy would know this, display. It's got display cases, not tables. So it seems that the things that are here, off on the left, there are books. You can see them here. Um, and then there's like different kind of plants and collections from nature in another. But each one seems to hold a variety of things, weapons, uh, adventuring gear. This is possibly more of his personal thing since his retirement from adventuring, possibly. Uh, and then there is a mask in this uh, one down here as you all kind of walk the space. Um, yeah, but other than uh, behind glass, everything's behind glass. It seems very, very special. So I think Classy kind of looks down at, um, I think, after, especially after seeing the mask, I think, looks at the mask and kind of looks over at um, Bruhilda and their really beautiful vial and over at Barbie and their very intimidating Aww. skull. And honestly, just shiver themselves, which is very cool. Um, <laughs> so kind of looks up at Shiver and goes, hmm, I think I need a little bit something more. Um, um. Could someone help me out with this? Could Aww. someone help me break the glass? I really would love to have that mask. I will help you. I will help you, Classy. And I strut on over and I raise a heel up and I slam <laughs> it down. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I'm envisioning always a moment oh, where I forget that you have legs. Yeah. Like, total rock. This is yeah. This is like uh, the perfect drag leg moment as it comes down with great force. Um, make a strength check. Oh boy! Oh my god! I keep I forgetting like. This. They were like split seconds. Oh my god. Oh my At god. At a 20, these charismatic legs have never had a greater purpose than <laughs> smashing through this glass. And uh, with great force, um, this uh, kind of glass container burst open everywhere. And uh, inside of this are four cards one, two, three, four, and a mask that sits in the middle. I don't really care about the cards. I'm Great. just going to slink right over the cards and then slip underneath the mask. And then you kind of see the mask like shimmy a little bit and then rise up as you see Classy now wearing this, this wooden mask on them. And just go, Ooh, how do I look? Classy, that looks lovely. You look fantastic, Classy. I have thank never you. seen someone look better in my whole entire life. Oh, thank you. Kind of like, um, puts their head, see the parts of their faces if they're like hiding, blushing, like covering Aww. their face a little bit. <laughs> now, this is not just any uh, mask, I have to be honest with you. Um, uh, for the average creature or human, it might be rather intimidating and scary. It is a wooden mask, it bears the visage of a snarling, fiendish face. While wearing it, uh, some things will happen, which I'll tell you all about. Um, but it does seem to be painted, like with war paint and things of that nature. There's a possibility the Mad Mage wore it at one point, um, or it was either an item collected. Um, but this is known as the Fear Eater's Mask. And <laughs> I love that Classy, who is the sweetest, tiniest, and most adorable ooze, is now <laughs> adorning the Fear Eater's Mask. Welcome in, Raiders. Thank you, Queen Court Games, for, for that raid and for joining us. Uh, welcome to the ooziest shenanigans on Twitch. Um, while wearing it, you gain a bonus action to feed fear of a frightened creature with, to feed on the fear of a frightened creature within 30 feet of you, which means you got to put them in a frightened state. Which can be done by any of you. The I think target we've been doing a good job of that. Yeah, so far. Uh, the target <laughs> must succeed on a DC 13 wisdom save uh, throw, or they take 2d6 psychic damage. So oh. I imagine you just oh. look like a mask now um, that you're kind of carrying around, uh, but it is kind of unsettling for the average creature and that's not an ooze to watch this fear eater mask um, manipulate its way around the space, being worn by our dear, dear classy. Because they're probably like shrunk back down at this point, you literally just see it. it's almost like a uh, like a snail with a shell, but the shell is a mask. You just kind of see like a bit of um, classies poking out as they walk along with the shell, the the mask dragging along behind them. Aww. So to anyone else, it looks like the back is the front, at least for now Aww. until you're growing larger. But because thank you, I just all of you just looked had your own little thing and I kind of had my thing I guess with my I got poured out of my original container don't know where the man mage put that so uh, you know I thought I'd find something else find something new I think it looks wonderful on you classy <laughs> thank you it suits you very well classy kind of again covers and I don't realize that it's a, like a dim demonic face right. it's even, even funny that he's covering the cheeks like he's blushing <laughs> right <laughs> like, yeah of the mask which is like <laughs> it's like a terribly mean mean mask face um I will say shiver since you're uh, again the tallest one and, and uh uh Barbie was able to break through the glass you can see that the other adventures that come through here have attempted to break the glass and have had been very not successful you can see like dents where they tried to like beat in um but it has only been the 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 charismatic legs of barbie that have broken through uh the charismatic these... legs of barbie <laughs> yeah that have broken through this <laughs> um so there have yeah extreme precautions taken but none of which were ooze based it seems from the the mage himself he didn't expect all of you to run away with his very valuable items um and unless there's any more activity here or anything else you want to try to break into, um, you're able to very easily make your way from one side through all the mini doors to the other and down. I'm going to head. Yep. going to carry the rest like before. Yeah. Okay, great. And you all moved with pretty daft speed as you're trying to get to the front door before anybody else can come in. You have one more floor to go before you're on the bottom level. A small window kind of tells you that. And as you loop around into this room, you see something very different. It seems like a fighting pit 
of some kind. Uh, there's a large hole in the middle that feeds down into the next floor, the first floor downstairs. And all of you see cages. Uh, there's blood on the floor. It seems that uh, you don't know what or who has been fighting here. Uh, but the blood from the cages all remain empty. But you can imagine these might be the cages that the Mad Mage moved all of these creatures in with, including all of you. Oh, this is sad. Yeah. Indeed. Um. All the lives torn apart by this terrible mage. Truly, he is the real monster of <laughs> this tower. He's the absolute worst. Yeah, and even look, he's got a big old chair just to watch them fight for his yep. pleasure. That's just like... Rude. Dehumanizing, really. Honestly, yeah. I, 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 in full, full, full disclosure, full disclosure... Mm. And I don't want you to have a negative opinion of me, but back when I was in my true demonic lord form of Lord Demon's Bane, both claws scratched the earth and back scratched the heavens, I too had a fighting pit much like this. I would purchase myself upon a dais in a gigantic throne, and I would watch as the masses killed themselves in my honor and glory in combat. Well, sure, but you're a demon lord. I mean, that comes with certain necessary. Oh, criteria yes, of being yes, that, that's that's part of the program. That's part of like you know a basic demon lord package. So when a human does it, it's like whoa, right? Wait a minute, yeah, exactly. you have appropriation. You need to work. Really <laughs> this is what your your form of entertainment is. Yeah. And also, you, you strike me the kind of person who would probably fight in the ring every so often as well. I oh, yes, I would get in there yeah. every now and then. You oh, know, you'd just, mix it yes. up. Oh, I would mix it up every now and then. One time, oh, one time, uh, Gratz decided to come through. You know what happens when Gratz comes through. Am Ooh. I right? And he nudges. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, you would know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to uh, slurp over next to uh, Barbie and just put out uh, 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 a soothing cold pseudopod uh, on oh. their uh, kind of shoulder area and say, I'm really sorry that uh, this mage has stolen something so important to you. But uh, I also appreciate that you uh, did what you had to do for, you know, mm. the societal expectations of demon culture. <laughs> Thank you very much. I try to uh, be the best uh, demon lord that people would want me to be. Mm. I think you're an absolutely amazing demon lord ooze. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm going to blush and put little Sue's little pseudopods over the skull. <laughs> over the skull's face. Um, yeah. Of course, there is no reaction, but just the two pseudopods. Um, and as you all have this tender moment, and maybe you search the space, Brihilda, there's a lot of dried blood on the floor. Can um, I can I consume dried blood? Um, you could sure try. I imagine it's the difference between having like a really filling protein shake and having like a handful of Cheerios. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you, you know, they're like blood flakes. Uh, I'll, and... I'll try to get. I'll try to blood get blood flakes. Oh god. <laughs> I'm I'm still hurt, so I'm gonna try to get a little bit. Um, yeah. Just just set us down over there and let me roll across the floor. No, yes, and I put. Drew Hilda down on the floor. You the and the dragon drive. egg, like, yeah. like across the floor. <laughs> yep. um, go ahead and roll for um, consumption, the blood consumption. Yeah, so three more. Woo you take three more. Uh, as you do find, like, just enough. And you can tell as you try to test these areas of, of dried blood, these are, these are in fact, uh, mixed creatures everything from like humanoids to um beasts of various kinds you're able to just kind of denote the difference which means you're all probably right this is a fighting pit of some kind and the mad mage tends to toss creatures and adventurers and whoever in it together to fight it out and as you slurp around and all of you are investigating the space and the chair uh gets ever closer you can see of course he has left a note because that he labels everything. Uh, and on a small a note pinned to this chair, um, it says, for the Mad Mage's butt only. Oh, I kind of want to sit in it. I mean, Brihilda can't read. So That's true. <laughs> That's true, yeah. You, 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 can, you can roll it. I can read some words. Yeah, you can uh, roll yeah, an intelligence true, yeah. check to see if Brihilda can make it out. <laughs> okay, a nine intelligence, you make out butt Oh, Definitely it says a, butt. It says butt. 
<laughs> it's a funny word. It's a great word. <laughs> That's all I can read on it, though. But, Classy, you get the whole message that this chair is for the Mad Mage's butt only. Do I see, like, does Bro Hilda look like they want to sit on it? Because if Bro Hilda. Kinda, yeah, it, yeah, you see her kind of leaning towards it, kind of shifting with the eggs. In that case, I don't think Classy will say anything then. Just be like, hey, Bro Hilda, you should sit on it. Okay. Would you set me on it, please, Barbie? I got you hold up. Uh, and he raises you up and like and, up on top and of it. And you and the egg come uh, and kind of are placed inside of this chair, which has a cushy bottom and very clearly has like dents where the Mad Mage's butt has set here quite a lot. Uh, probably oh, he's the got most. Butt grooves. Yeah, he's got butt grooves. This is the most set in chair <laughs> of the Mad Mage. But your weight does not match that of the Mad Mage. And he did leave you a fair share of warning that this is for his butt only. Mm -hmm. And as Bruhilda and the egg in which you carry settle in the Mad Mage's uh, single butt groove, because you're only big enough for one butt groove, um, something, you all hear something click. The hole in the floor that drops down into the next level uh, kind of seals off. And as it does, you begin to hear the trickle of water as the room begins to fill. Oh. Oh dear. Uh -oh. oh no. I think my love of luxury may have doomed us all. Um, well, what? I don't think we should ever blame the victim. This is definitely the Mad Mage's fault, but we should get out of here as soon as possible. What oh, do we I do? Agree. We gotta save Kyle! Uh, yeah, okay, all of us together, we can just run, uh lift Kyle and run. I got uh, okay. Ooh. Okay, and you all let's begin. Go. You all begin splashing through water. Water's like splashing. It's slowly coming up. Classy, you'll be the first one to be fully engulfed. Um, it's. I imagine that you are just above what's basically a foot or two of water at this point as it's beginning to fill in, and it is sloshing down the stairs to the next level, to the entry level. As all of you run down to the final floor, uh, as you do. Uh, you are, I'm going to take over, us over, um, you are met with the same circular kind of room, uh, but this is definitely just an entry hallway, uh, to say the least. Um, there's like not anything terribly uh, decorative except for the few lights that are left. The door stands wide open and this floor is also filling with water. As you come down the left-hand side, um, yeah, you can see there actually is a floor, one more floor down, but this floor is kind of getting the leftover trickles of the water upstairs. Um, Barbie's gonna walk right over to the door and close it. Like, wait, 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 wait. Uh, what? We should um, let the water drain. Yeah, we should really leave it open to let the water drain until you figure out an, a but, way, but, way to stop the filling. But the oh, yeah. adventurers, do we want the adventurers to get in when you let the it's door fine. open? Like I said, we're gonna need more food for the baby anyway, so we can or, just. Yes. Now, well, Barbie, you please. walked over to the door. I'm gonna tell yeah. you this: as you walk over to the door, your eyes see something. You thought you were pretty high up. I mean, you've looked out a few windows on your way down. But this is the first time you realize that this chunk of land that the tower sits on is levitating. Because clouds meet where there should be land. Ooh. You are in the air. Oh, yeah. Huh. So, quick update. We are floating in the sky. Oh. Well, hmm. but that's, that's, ooh. So we're so, not likely to get more union members until we land. It, it, you know, yes, you're right. You're right. Um, Unless we have more adventurers show up. That's also true. I'm I'm wondering how the adventurers yeah. got up here. That's would a, that's, you like to roll an investigation to find out? I would love to. <laughs> you all can if you want. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. Basically, you see the doors open. You don't see any other figures. You don't hear anybody else. Oh, um, oh that's actually a pretty good roll for once. Yeah. I am rolling like garbage tonight, but I love it. <laughs> um, a four, a zero, a 13. Um, uh, as and, that's happening, yeah. I'm going to go block the stairway down and like kind of solidify my body in a little more of an ice form so that the water flows out the front door and not into the basement, whatever's in, in the basement. What it, oh, yeah, you, you wall yourself and the water kind of what's only on this floor is just a little bit, right? It's like the leak down from mm. the tub upstairs. So it's really low down here. Uh, but you know that upstairs it's probably uh pouring uh, at the moment and you kind of block it off so that it doesn't continue to trickle down uh, which means this room will begin to kind of fill as well because now you've stopped it up but um, whatever's in the basement remains 
safe. Unseen. Yeah, unseen. Now at a 13 for your... Um, you do actually have to kind of leave the tower proper. And maybe, Barbie, because you have the legs for it, you're able to take the, the staircase down, um, which you will see, um, is uh, unlit. And as you come down the path, you see at the very, very end, there is uh, something has uh, been tied off. They've, they've tossed a rope and there's a giant rope that dangles all the way past the clouds towards the ground. Uh, you don't know how long it is. You can't quite see that far down, but you can tell that there are both small chunks of uh, land at various widths, heights, and distances from the main floating island, and there seems to be a dangling rope to potentially uh, whatever is beneath you. Mm, I see. All right, uh, guys, there's a rope. They're climbing a rope to get Can up here. you burn it? Oh, I'm going to pull it up. I'm we might gonna... want to use it ourselves to get down. Oh, yeah, no, oh, that's, that's a, a good point. idea. Yeah, Let me yeah. pull it up. I use my legs to pull them up. <laughs> <laughs> we watch as you sit there and you use your legs uh, the way a cricket like yeah. rubs them together to like <laughs> yeah. pull the rope up. Uh, it's awkward, weird, and, and uh, you know, maybe strangely sexy um, as the <laughs> rope uh, spools uh, and you put it away and you have at least the rope entrance seems to be blocked off. Now, you don't know if that's the way the mage gets up here. Uh, maybe he has another way in, uh, but this is what you this is what you have. All right, well, uh, I don't think we're going to have any more adventurers coming up here, and we have a nice way of getting down, so... Uh, walks back inside. That was very productive. Uh, it was. Well, now oh, uh, we can, I guess we can uh, close the door, or should we wait till the water drains out? I think um, we should drain the water yeah. out. Okay. Let's, yeah. leave the water, let's leave the door open and figure out how to stop the water, I guess, as well. Because if, if it keeps going, this the water just continually going seems like a very mad mage thing. Yeah. Oh, wait, yeah. wait. It started when I sat in the chair. Maybe there's something in the chair we could do to uh, make it stop. That's or a like a call. button. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like a yeah. Like That's a never button. gone wrong with but for us. Buttons have been good to us. That's true. That is very true. All right, you head back upstairs uh, to check the chair. You do, in fact, find a lever. Oh, I love a good lever. Somebody pull it. Okay, who's pulling it? I'll, I'll try and pull it. You Ooh, pull. A strength, I think. Okay, well, roll a strength check. It's not a very large lever. It's just a single hand lever oh, okay. that's like hidden for the mage himself. A 12. You pull this lever? And as you do, that hole in the middle opens up once again, and what you thought dumped into the floor below actually does not. And what is five, six feet of water begins to drain through this giant hole in the floor down to somewhere that you cannot see. Anybody that is in this room is going to need to make either an athletics check um, or, a de uh, or a dexterity check to find a way to not get drained down. Oh boy. Oh I'm boy. Oh. I'm still walking the stairway to the basement on the first floor. <laughs> okay. Scared to roll. Oh I'm wow. Scared. I have been rolling good. I was oh, scared. I rolled terrible. I did okay. Okay. You actually, okay, so we see Shiver walk down to the next floor. What is now just a little bit of damp, that kind of, uh, there's not a whole lot of water down here, but it is a very dark, uh, circular room. Uh, the basement. But to your surprise, there's actually quite a lot down here. There are statues that uh, engulf the or, or circle the room uh, from point to point to point. Uh, and they all focus inwards towards a centralized location. And I'm going to take you from there to here. Um, it is this room here. Did it do it? Roll 20 pinged. There we go. So it's this bottom right room, I guess you could say. Um, you see that... Um, there is no water. There's no hole in the ceiling, at least to the, the first floor upstairs. Um, it's just a dark room with these strange statues. What it does, you're unsure. Or what they do. Looks like he's got kind of a statue garden down there. It's probably not that exciting, just a place to sit and, you know, meditate or something. As you come up to say that, they are all gone, and you hear this, like, as the tub, this, like, giant room upstairs is draining. I did. Oh, no. 17? 17 saves. 12. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I'm so sorry. The seven does not. Where oh, are okay. you, Barbie? I was upstairs because I was carrying Bruhilda to the lever. So, and I rolled a So you're 17. also in there too. And you yeah. rolled a 17. So that's that's yeah. a check. The 
seven strength is not the 17 is. So yeah, as this room begins to drain, um, it's too strong for you, Classy, the current. And you see Classy gets roped up in the whirlpool that is beginning to drain into this oh, ever black pit. Oh, no. What do we do? What do we do? Uh, uh, hold on. Fun. I uh, reach a leg out. Classy, <laughs> grab my subtle leg. And I reach a leg out towards Classy. All right, Classy, Um, you are going to get an advantage on this, but I need you to make a dex check to latch on to this this fishnetted leg that has been put out for, oh for your... Oh, my God. We believe in you. Not oh, funny. Oh, <laughs> You can't miss it um, as this this uh, meaty, deft limb uh, sticks itself out in your path and you slam into it, grabbing hold uh, of it, and Barbie pulls you in uh, away as the rest of the room and drains. And as it does, Shiver, you make your way up to meet everybody else to let them know that whatever the brilliantness that you said was, that there's something downstairs. Um, and you see that uh, Classy is latched on at the last second. To our dear I Barbies. Until this very moment, I was not a legs kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> but so hypothetically, they're like dangling above the floor in the first floor. So I could like go over there underneath and that catch them hole, if they fell. That hole does not. It looked like it led down because there's a oh. hole in the floor, but it leads into a black void of nothing. Oh. Mm, well, in that case, I'll just kind of slurp up to that floor and be like, hey, what's everybody doing up here? <laughs> it's really wet. <laughs> well, uh, we, well, Classy almost went down into a black void of nothingness. Yeah, but that, we that got the water to drain. Yeah. Oh, very nice. And Classy, yeah. Classy was saved by Barbie's sexy legs. My sexy leg has once again proved to be the, the tool to today's adventure. You know, right. legs are really just the best, aren't they? <laughs> oh, they really are. Mm. I don't have any. And he's going to let this slope, <laughs> off. <laughs> slope <laughs> off of Bobby's legs. <laughs> God, I love Classy so much. <laughs> and as you all have this moment, if you'd like to check the basement, you can. You see exactly what uh, Shiver saw, which is this circular room, these statues. Um, I actually see a black you know. screen. Oh, that means that. Oh, just kidding. That means I did not turn off my dynamic lighting. Let's try that one more time. Ooh. This room down here in Ooh. the bottom right. Um, and you can see there's, a, similar to that like a star type situation, there's like a container or and to, to, to space or something. It was very similar to the switch room that you were all standing in. Um, maybe it's all interconnected, you don't know. But these statues around the room um, are, om I'm going to say almost identical. Um, and they all face towards this centralized point. What it all does, you're currently unsure of. Um, the sigil in the center, does it look like one of the like runes that I saw on the ritual? Yes, it does. Okay. Ooh. I'm going to like, this is another symbol. I'm going to roll it out again. Yeah, um, it rolls out for the first time. I imagine this mask like looks at it. Yeah. Uh, right? It kind of like looks over this. Um, and... What you learn, knowing what you know now, you've seen a, quite a few petrified people throughout this place. Um, and this clearly this mage wasn't mad all the time. But this ritual, now that you're able to piece some things together, you think that it is a ritual used to drain the life force from other beings. And staring at all of these creatures, or all of these humanoids that are petrified here, um, they all dress in robes and have wands and books, and they're poised in these oh. positions, it seems that the Mad Mage is picking and choosing other wizards to slowly drain the magic force from. Might be how he got mad, might be how he got so powerful. And once it's all done, they petrify here, and he seems to be leaving them. Hmm. Classy would, like, um, give that pondering, just be like, yeah, so I think it's, it's a classic, classic mage thing, you know, just draining the life force and the magic forces from other mages because they have a whole thing where they can't really coexist. Oh, um, they sure. always have to be the strongest. Yeah, it's just it's sure. a weird thing ab about them, well, at least the ones <laughs> I've run into. I don't you know, see ages ago, I was that. in an archlich's tower, and yeah, yeah, they don't get along with others. Yeah, they're they're very, very standoffish. Seems a little. It's powerful. a competitive industry. <laughs> 
It really is. It's 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 very oh cutthroat. Oh God. It's a noisy ooze world. Mm-hmm. It is. I don't see what's so special about life training. I do it all the time, though. Yeah, well, I you're mean, very look at what special, they do. though. Yeah, you're very special. Look at what they do to even come close to the power you have. I know. It, it, it's, it's, look at look at that. Yeah, I know. Just, Just like, think what you could do with another week here. Oh. We could do so much stuff here. We could do a lot here. Perhaps. We should. We should. Perhaps we should. Well, if we have a week here, we should plan something out for when they return and then we can defeat them soundly. Mm. So we're, we're taking over this tower then. Well, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I, I imagine- think this is our new home. And as I imagine, a camera pans floor by floor by floor, and this place is destroyed. Every room that you've come to, <laughs> you've triggered every trap. You've destroyed anything that was standing. You've broken through the glass. Nothing is left exactly as the mad mage, mad mage put it together before he took vacation. And Classy, maybe you simmer on the fact that he is draining their life force, but he's taking their magic, which means 10. 10 wizards, have that, which is in this room, have had their magic absorbed by the Mad Mage, which may tell you maybe how powerful he is. But in fact, you all do have about 12 days left before the Mad Mage is going to return. The front door is locked. You have uh, secured and freed quite a few of the creatures here. Your union poster has been posted uh, if you want. And here at the end, all of you hear upstairs a knock. Oh, someone's at the door. Who's there? Oh, who is it? You maybe you peer through the keyhole, um, but you hear a voice from the other side. It does not speak common. It is not an adventurer, but the sound of another beast rings out. Um, so I'm here because I heard that you were starting a union for creatures, beasts, and monsters. Uh, oh yeah, we sure are. We are. Uh, did you did you get the flyer or or from word of mouth? Um, a flyer fell from the sky. I'm an evil pixie. I just wanted to participate. Are you an evil Sharon? Oh my gosh, is Sharon? Is that you? Oh, of course it's Sharon. It's me. It's me, D- D- Barrio Demon's Bane. It's me. Oh, Demon's Bane, it's been so long. Oh my gosh, you look wonderful. Let me let you in. Hold on. And okay. Like- he uses his leg to open the door up. <laughs> and, and the door opens and you see this small, evil-looking pixie, uh, which doesn't match the voice at all, um, kind of floats in, gives the skull a hug, uh, and you realize that maybe now that you're staring outside, from somewhere up at the top of the tower rains down more of these flyers with yes and no. The creature's union is being dropped from the sky like rain and papers flutter down to the world below you. There is no telling what creatures may show up over the next two weeks. Next week, each of you will get to tell me what you have done over the two weeks' time to prepare for the Mad Mage's return. (laughs) And we will start with the Great Union Meeting. Um, uh, And we will see if the Mad Mage returns next week. (laughs) But we are at time, everybody. Remember, next week we are continuing to support Jasper's Game Day. We're going to have our own special little... uh, a bar for that so if you help us fill some of those goals maybe i'll make some more shenanigans happen and hopefully in enough time for the mad mages return let's go around and uh, tell everybody who you are and what you're up to when you're not here joining us on cobalt press let's go uh, i don't know we're going to start with katie because you're right on my screen uh katie you are up Hi, everybody. I am Katie Downey, a.k.a. Goblin Katie, and I am a TTRPG and variety streamer. You can catch me on Sunday nights on twitch.tv slash D4RPG, and I play Seisha Valisbard, the Oath of Vengeance Paladin, and uh, I, I play with an absolutely amazing group. I highly recommend it. On Mondays, I'm here playing this wonderful game. On Thursdays, I can be found on Mini Terrain Domain's Twitch channel playing Dawnbringers. And on Sunday mornings, I play New World with the wonderful D&D Jordan Lee. But you can follow me on Twitter at Goblin Katie and keep up with me. I post a lot of stuff about... Uh, Uh, Jasper's Game Day, as I'm the executive manager, and a good bit of stuff about Take This as well, which is another organization that benefits mental health awareness within the gaming community. Nice. Um, Katie out there doing good. 
Um, just like Bruhilda, some things, you know, sometimes you just put a little of your character. There's a little uh, bit of bleed. Kind of, yeah, a little bleed. bit of bleed. <laughs> just out there doing good, hatching eggs, uh, you know, raising awareness. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, Wally. Oh, wow. <clears throat> What's up, y'all? It's me, Wally. You can find me on Twitter at W-A-L-L-E-132, like the cute little Disney robot. Pretty much just talking about what I do because I'm a TTRPG streamer and performer. That's where I talk about all the shows that I might not because I have such a weird schedule with my shows. <laughs> so just follow me on Twitter and you can find out what I'm doing every single week and pretty much what I'm going to be in coming up next. Um, that's Yeah, that's pretty much it for me. And uh, just follow me on Twitter, y'all. <laughs> It's so much fun being in this game. Yes, right? So ridiculous. I love this um, game so much. Josh. Hey, uh, yeah, my name is Josh. I do a lot of things. Uh, so follow me uh, at Joshua M. Simons everywhere. Uh, I am the community and content manager for Demiplane. Uh, I am the assistant director of ambassadors for Jasper's Game Day. Um, uh, a whole bunch of games, but the one that I want to highlight right now is this Friday. I'll be running a charity game uh, starting at 3 p.m. Pacific time over at twitch.tv slash Athena Bean for St. Jude uh, nice. Hospital. Um, that's that's the big one that I'm, I'm trying to highlight this week. So come and join us on Friday for uh, an Alice in Wonderland themed d d adventure um, oh, for the kids. I love that. That's great. Um, and last but certainly not least, Drac, uh, tell us who you are. <laughs> Hi, I'm Draconics or Drac. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Dra Draconics. That's D-R-A-K-O-N-I-Q-U-E-S. Uh, I kind of stream all over the place as well. I'm also a TTRPG performer and writer and producer and all of that. All of that shenanigans. Um, but you can catch me. My, my schedule is also kind of weird. Um, on Tuesdays, I'm over on Table Story um, at 4 p.m. Eastern in a, Kingmaker, in a campaign called Kingmakers. Highly emotional, highly, I, so many content warnings on that. It, like, if, it's a lot of fun. On um, Wednesdays, I'm over on Rule of Law um, in a um, cyber campaign called Infinite Horizon. I play a time traveling lizard alien in that. A lot <laughs> of fun. On Fridays, I'm over on Key Times at 6 p.m. Um, Pacific or 9 p.m. Eastern in the Pathfinder a second edition campaign called Parliament of Owls. It's an old villain campaign. So, all playing just terrible, awful people that the big, the big good guys are trying to take down. Um, and every third Sunday of the month, you can hear my voice and actually play podcast called Super, Super Idols RPG, which is kind of like a, it's a Mars campaign. It's kind of like Sailor Moon plus Pop Idols mixed together. And I play <laughs> a, a sweet cinnamon role um, oh. of a, a Super Idol, which is a ton of fun. Uh, and yet, oh, I'm also going to be, I'm also part of a three shot. Uh, we already had a first part of it on Saturday, but um, this coming Saturday at, I believe, 6 p.m. Eastern, no, 5 p.m. Eastern over on Friends Hero Dice, which is a teacher busy channel that I'm the co-founder and event organizer of. And we have a, um, a short shot of a Everyday Heroes um, short shot. We're going to be playing, it's very heavily based on the A-team or like 80s, nice. 90s action. Nice. TV shows. Um, my character is Mr. U, heavily based on Mr. T. <laughs> um, um, and we have a lot of very cool and fun characters in that. So if you want to check that I out, love that he's or... moved down the alphabet one letter. <laughs> I, know, I know. Never take a glass of milk from anybody. Love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, but uh, yeah, and that's on Friends Who Are Dice on Twitch. And nice. That's, that's everything. Uh, well, definitely check that out, everybody. And I'm Little Red Dot. I've been your dungeon master. Uh, you can find me online where little red dots are found. Um, I want to remind everyone, uh, we are in a Kickstarter right now here at Cobalt Press. Uh, we launched last Monday. We've already reached $130,000 on the current Kickstarter, which is Campaign Builders, Cities, and Towns. A really incredible uh, kind of manual and guide to help GMs build richer... Um, uh, cities and towns for their campaigns with dark plots and glorious NPCs. So check that out. Uh, get on backing it. You still have, I think, two weeks before we close that down. And if you want to see more of Cobalt Press, we're going to be at MomaCon here in Atlanta. I'm going to get the great joy of actually getting to see Josh some for that, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't know if, Katie, you're going to be there because I know you're Atlanta-based, but uh, MomaCon is around the corner. So come find me. I will be there. I'll be running games. I'll be doing panels. Um, should be very, very cool and a lot of fun. And, you know, if you want to see me somewhere other than Cobalt Press, um, as the, all of these people all over the place but uh, I have recently accepted the role of event planner for the new D3 at Sea cruise event so make sure you check that thanks gang you make sure you check that out if you want a cruise uh, a new kind of uh, adventure and vacation uh, we are taking a cruise to the Bahamas in November and we're going to be playing a ton uh, of games with guest GMs that you see in the industry all over the place so keep your eyes on that and if you've got questions I'm encouraging you to reach out and I'll make sure to point you in the right direction and try to get this answered um 
that's it. That's what I've got. S- support our Kickstarter. And you know what? A few people in chat tonight were new to this show. If you want to catch the previous episodes, because this is episode three of four, uh, you can head over to our YouTube and catch all of our VODs for all of our uh, shows here on the Twitch channel, including The Great Ooscape. Uh, I want to thank you all for being here. We will see you all next week. Same Cobalt time, same Cobalt channel for the finale of The Great Ooscape. Have a great evening, everybody. Bye. Bye.